Cindy, who is 22, is the leader of this amazing adventurous group. Although she is a loyal friend and quick-witted, she can be bossy and lonely at times. Luckily, she has many positive aspects to her, such as having a good eyesight and, and an incredible sense of direction. What inspired Cindy to be a spy was when she used to watch James Bond when she was little. Cindy is not good at hiding or blending them, and this often means that missions can be tricky. The intelligent spy, Agent Anna, Anna, Anna is 27 years old and she is also the special agent. Although she is very kind and generous, she can be quite moody. As well as her praise of loving fat chicken pizza, she is also a geek as she knows everything about history and grammar. Even though she's amazingly good at computers and very intelligent, the one thing she can't do is tie her shoelaces. For as long as Anne has been working with Cindy, she has always been jealous because Cindy is a boss. She is also amazing at shooting people. Bones, who is 19 years old, is a hyperactive gymnastics guru. Even though he is a spy, he is very sarcastic, crazy and very serious. Some of his hobbies include climbing trees and doing parkour. As a child, Bones enjoyed watching Scooby-Doo that made him want to be a detective. Despite being good fun, he can be extremely awkward to work with. I am King Peter, ruler of the beautiful kingdom of Arendelle, and I desperately require your help as my beloved daughter, Princess Lucy, has been kidnapped, even though she was guarded day and night by some of my fearsome soldiers. Someone has still managed to capture her. You have no idea how precious Princess Lucy is to me. Nonetheless, I beg for your help to rescue her, as I have heard you are one of the best and most skillful detective agencies around. A few days ago, I received a short ransom note stating that the kidnappers are holding my dearest child in an underwater cave located in the depths of the Bermuda Triangle. Even though this sounds bad enough, this particular area is home to several species of large and ferocious sharks. This mission will therefore be unbelievably dangerous and risky, but I am putting my trust into you to return my princess. If you complete this rescue safely, I will bestow on you a gift of an incredible ruby. This amazing jewel has the power to grant three and only three wishes. I wish you the best of luck in the hope that you bring my daughter back to her home. Yours sincerely, King Peter. I believe King Peter wants our help. You don't want that ruby. This is the most dangerous mission we've ever undertaken. Right, let's come up with the plan for this mission. Well, I've actually got a plan. What's your great idea then? We can sit at home watching TV and eating biscuits for half and ten. We're going on this mission. No, I don't want to. I can't be bothered. Since he's the boss, we're going on this mission. Just deal with it. Okay then, what's your idea? Well, if we don't do this mission, then the king might threaten to shut the agency down and make us live on the streets. How does that sound good for you? And right, he doesn't have the power to ruin our career. I suppose you do have a point. Okay, I'll do this. Where is Cindy? I heard the fly guy, I forgot my letter in the map. Yes, let's go, I'm so excited. I can't wait, you guys, jump in. I'm still enjoying these chocolate cookies. I'll hold the map while you eat those cookies, but remember, save some for later. I suggest we go and head down straight away, okay? Oh no, I led you the wrong way. I meant to say left. I'm so sorry. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. What are you talking about? Is it for my 
magical ruby? That thing is dangerous. Watch out for what you wish for. was the youngest member of the spy group was feeling like a dry mop crying for water. His dehydration was becoming drier and drier as the beaming blast of sun blazed on him. Silently, his skin went pale like cheese melting slowly. Bones felt like he'd been, although it was only for a couple of hours, prowling the desert for years. He was starving. Bones' face was as sweaty as Usain Bolt's. Bones was white about his unprotected shoulders while the sun was burning down on him. Tormented by the colossal weight of humans and bags, their mighty sea camels groaned in agonising pain because of their daily occupations. Gently, the wind whistled in the camels' fluffy ears. Swiftly, our detectives travelled onward and got closer to their destination, the Bermuda Triangle. The brave camels trotted fearlessly through the droughted sand. The furious, glaring sun beamed down on them. As the hairy camels trotted along the splintering land, Sam was burning against their hooves. Unluckily, the camels, who were praying for rest, knew they had to carry on for the heroes. Suddenly, on the horizon, they saw an ominous pillar of whirling, angry sand, howling as it engulfed rock towers of rock, travelling towards them with alarming speed. Sam punched and kicked them as the fragments of the storm flew towards them. There was a colossal sandstorm yapping at them like a vicious pack of werewolves lashing towards them. Swiftly, the trio bounded back and covered their heads with blankets. Fighting through the ghostly storm, they were determined to get out. Tuesday, 11th of November. Dear Diary, yesterday started like any other day in this deep, dark dump. Like usual, I saw the grey, menacing sharks swirling and surrounding my new gloomy hell home. At dawn, I watched the sun rise through a haze of bright, wispy clouds as I wondered if my father, back in Arendelle, was also gazing upon it. As usual, breakfast was scraps from the day before, raw fish. Sunrise, I have to say, was the most miraculous part of the day. As I woke up yesterday, I had hoped my... I had hoped my father would come and rescue me from this wretched cave. Later on that day in the afternoon, I sat on a rock so much that bloodthirsty sharks do their graceful dance, circling the water. The sharks' appearance and wistfulness drained my last hopes. As the nurse went through my body constantly, I was worried about my capture coming back. However, I was also very hungry. As night fell, the feeling of loneliness crept up my spine like a spider. It felt like a maze with no ending. As I lay on a hard rock, 
I could feel my tummy roar as if it was an animal clawing at me. The dark spread across the cave as the stunning stars glistened in the night sky. Everything was dark, glum and horrible. As the night got dimmer, I just wanted to see my family again. This was hell. How on earth are we going to get into here? <coughs>
only a darling Princess Lucy, my one and only daughter. I'm here, Father. Look how dirty my gown is. I'm filthy. What are we going to do?